Hey there, this is part one of our Paper Fairy House Luminaries. So if you're working with Cricut Design Space, I want to go over the back end work here. And um, there's gonna be a few different things and a few different options of how to set things up for your um, fairy house. Um, so I've already brought in my fairy house templates here. I have the actual house structure, I have the windows, the fairy, and the roof. And if um, you need a refresher, you just upload your, you know, SVG files right here on the upload button. So I've already brought mine in there. And there's just a couple things we need to do here to make sure it gets cut out correctly. First is you'll notice these black boxes. We need to change these to score lines. Right now they're still cut lines, but we need to change them to score lines. So um, when you bring it into Design Space, you might need to ungroup. Um, I've already ungrouped mine. You would just, of course, go over to your Layers panel, and there's a Group or Ungroup button at the top of the Layers panel there. So I'm going to select each one of these um, black boxes here and go over to Line Type and change it to Score. And then just do that with each one on your screen. It's going to tell Cricut to score where we need it to so that we can fold our fairy house with a lot less effort and a lot more accuracy. Do the same thing with the roof of the fairy house. Okay, so I've changed all of that to score and it should look something like this after you change everything to score. Um, we are going to need to attach it. If you don't plan on wanting to use, um, if you don't want to add any additional textures like wood, a uh, wood grain texture or um, use your deboss tip in any way here, you can just stop at this point and you can just go ahead and um, select like the whole fairy house and use your attach tool at the bottom of the layers panel because you need to attach the score lines to the actual house itself so that Cricut knows to score in very specific areas. Um, if you have the Cricut Maker and are wanting to add some additional detail here, or you have the Explore and you want to use um, a pen to draw some additional detail, then I'm going to show you what to do with that. Um, I'm going to go over to my Upload button here and I'm going to upload a wood texture that I made. And this is a vector, not an image. And I'm putting this in here. You could technically upload something like this in the patterns and then go to fill and change it as a pattern and put it onto one of these, but then you're going to have to use the print then cut feature. And that will make your fairy house significantly smaller because print then cut can only go up to 9.25 inches wide. Um, so just keep note of that. I like to do this method because I can make a larger fairy house and it also looks a little bit more um, realistic and authentic. So I've input this um, wood grain um, vector here, and I'm just gonna actually bring it right over the top of my fairy house. Let me zoom in here a little bit for you. And I'm just gonna scale it to where it's kind of sitting inside the fairy house there. And I'm gonna um, repeat this. So let's just duplicate this. Now there's, two, there's actually three ways to do this. Um, you can do this with one layer and make it to where a pen is drawing all of this on to your fairy house, which is really cool. Or you can do it to where it's just debossing and adding texture if you have the maker, or you can do both. Um, so for example sake here, I'm just going to click on one of these, I'm going to go over to line type, and then we could change it to deboss to where it's going to add that nice texture to our outside of our fairy house, and I really like that um, option. Or we could change it to draw if you don't have um, the maker and you want to add the same texture, but you want to make it to where it's being drawn on with say a brown pen, maybe you're using brown paper, and then you want to add like a dark brown pen that, get, that draws all this wood. That's one way you could do it. Or I've actually done it where I do both and it makes it look, it takes a while, but it makes it look really cool. So um, I'm going to show you how I do both here. So I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna change all of this to um, deboss first. Okay, 
And then I'm actually just going to go in here and I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to change it to draw and I'm not going to line it up directly on top of it. I'm going to kind of offset it just a little bit to create even more like depth. Okay, I'm going to duplicate it again. And this looks kind of messy on the screen because, you know, the line types are just trying to match up with what we're telling them um, and what we're telling Cricut to cut them as. But when you actually do this, it looks pretty cool, at least in my opinion. Okay, so um, now I have sort of this layered effect of wood where the bottom is being debossed and then the top is having some um, uh, detail being drawn on with a pen. So um, it'll look pretty cool, but once again, we need to make sure we tell Cricut where to do all of this. So you have to attach everything to the cut layer. Let me zoom out here because I'm grabbing way too much stuff on my screen. Okay, there we go. So now that I have all of those elements going on there grouped together, just use that attach tool and it won't really change or anything. It'll just, you know, say that you're attached and then you'll go to your cut screen um, and it'll prompt you step by step. It'll probably prompt you to do the debossing first um, or maybe the scoring first, then the debossing, then the uh, pen, and then the cut finally. Um, so just follow the prompts as it tells you uh, to load your tools. And um, you're good with your roof. You can, of course, do any of this with your roof that you want to. Um, I personally don't do anything with the roof because I cover it with petals. So just make sure you attach those score lines. There we go, I've attached my score lines. And um, then you'll also wanna make sure you set your measurements. My measurements for my roof here are 6.7 wide by 4.2 high. And the measurements for my actual fairy house are 11.5 wide by 6.4 high. You of course will need to use a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, sheet of cardstock for the fairy house um, base in order to make that size work. And then for my doors over here, I have 1.7 inches high and 2. Point, I'm sorry, 2.6 inches high by 1.7 inch wide, and uh, 1.6 inch wide by 2.1 inch high on the windows. And then of course you'll want to put the fairy in there and make sure she just fits inside of the door. And my fairy is measured at 1.2 inches wide by 2. Are two, I'm sorry, 2.1 inches high. Um, lots of measurements going there, but you can see them on the screen. And of course you can change these measurements for yourself, however you would like. So I just wanted to go over the back end work here so you know exactly what to do if you're wanting to add these wood textures or not. Um, if you plan on adding none of this wood texture, that's fine, or you can do something else, but just make sure you change those lines to score lines and attach them at the very least. So you're able to have your Cricut score this for you and it makes it a lot easier to fold and a lot more precise and accurate. And then hop over to part two of this video and I'm going to show you how to assemble all of this together. Oh, and um, if you are adding the uh, paper petals to the top, then um, you'll find those templates, of course, too. I scale mine about uh, three and a half to four inches um, long and or high and then just under two inches wide on those petals and um, you're really going to cut them out according to your preference. Um, I do a couple layers in the video which you'll see um, so you'll need anywhere from 10 to 20 of them um, and then of course there's the center um, little flower topper piece as well you'll see me mention in the next video. Um, you can just scale those to your preference as well. Um, I usually do them, let's see, it's a little large, so I would probably do those about a little under an inch and a half each on those little center ones if you decide to add it. Like I said, some of this is optional, so um, kind of play around with it for yourself and get a feel for what you like for your particular style for your fairy house.